here you go. Here's the image, right? That's the visual image. Just like with an electron, if we imagine we were throwing something at a wall, it's like it just goes right through, but it shouldn't be able to. Does that remind you of anything, chat? Does that remind you of anything? What does it say here on our macroscopic quantum tunneling? What is the actual explanation? When you throw a ball at a wall, you can be sure it will bounce back at you. You would be extremely surprised if the ball suddenly appeared on the other side of the wall. In quantum mechanics, this type of phenomenon is called tunneling, and it is exactly the type of phenomenon that has given reputation for being bizarre and unintuitive. The 2025 Nobel Prize laureates our physics are John Clark, Michael Devore, I don't know how to say his name, and John Martinez. John Martinez, it was meant to be, Chad. It was meant to be. John Martinez used in a series of experiments to demonstrate that the bizarre properties of the quantum world can be made concrete in a system big enough to be held in the hand. That's the macroscopic part of it. Their superconducting electrical system could tunnel from one state to another as if it was passing straight through the wall. They also showed that the system absorbed and emitted energy in doses of specific sizes, just as predicted by quantum mechanics. So what is this saying? First of all, the system they produced is a Josephson junction. The thing that we have been talking about for like over a year now, superconductor, insulator, superconductor, Josephson Junction. They also won the Nobel Prize for their total body of work, not just one particular experiment, their total body of work. And the whole point of it is that they've taken it from the quantum, they've taken this quantum effect, this tunneling effect, and they've been able to scale it up to the macro level, something that is actually visible, something that you can see and hold in your hand. So now we've taken the idea of quantum teleportation quantum teleportation and now we've got the first precursor to macroscopic full body teleportation are we at that level on publicly no not yet but this opens the door up for it and again the only way this is possible the same way where it says here in the last sentence it says it showed the system absorbed and emitted energy in doses of specific sizes just as predicted by quantum mechanics. What they're essentially saying is when we hit our, hit our wall, we can predict how much energy is going to come across the other side. Why? Because imagine our ripples, right? With, because there's this extra dimension, we can predict how much energy is going to make it through. We can predict that. Why this is this so big is, A, not just are we vindicated. Teleportation is real, 100%. It will be proven to be real. But also it shows that the ether is real shows there really is an extra dimension out there. So let's go ahead and take a listen to this clip right here. This is me on Tim Pool with Dr. Yu. Oh, if we were to see that extra dimension, we would see the ripple in that extra dimension. And this is how quantum tunneling works as well. How is the electron getting through? Because there's an extra dimension and you're seeing the ripple. And now from the perspective of quantum mechanics, you would say there's a probability that the electron's on the other side of the wall. And so, what is the analogy then if we say ER equals EPR? We say, okay, that's EPR. We just saw the electron teleport through a wall that shouldn't be able to do physically. Well, the equivalent is we need to find out what's the barrier of our macroscopic reality. What's the wall? The wall is space-time. The wall is the zero-point energy. That's the wall between me being here and me being in your seat. So if we remove that zero-point energy, if we squeeze that zero-point energy out, then theoretically we can cause macroscopic quantum tunneling why is my name four orbs? Four orbs is how we determine the destination. That's how we determine the destination. If we would look at our three time, three dimensional reality, left, right, forward, and back, up, down. We say, how do we manipulate space time? How do we squeeze the vacuum? We squeeze the vacuum by creating a large mass, just like the earth. The earth around us is creating this gravitational effect that we feel is this downward force. So if we can create a very localized gravitational effect, very powerful one, we can squeeze the vacuum. Squeezing the vacuum will release this negative energy that we need. The negative energy is what we need for producing a wormhole. Just like if I were to take a balloon, 
Imagine a balloon, a long balloon, hot dog balloon. You squeeze the hot dog balloon. What happens? Gets big on this side and gets big on that side. That's what we're doing to space time. Literally what we're doing. We're squeezing it. And now you've got to go somewhere else. So the air that you squeezed out of here is going to go over here or over here. Same idea. So how do we pull this off? We use a fusion bomb. Might even be a micro fusion bomb. The exact thing that Friedwart Winterberg was talking about. You take a fusion bomb, not a regular fusion bomb that releases neutrons, but a directed energy conversion fusion bomb that has a high efficiency, aka a neutronic. A neutronic fusion bomb squeezes the vacuum. So we've got one side of the issue dealt with. Now we've created a monopole. One side, this side is getting squeezed away. Now it's got to reappear somewhere else. Now, what is, the, what is the barrier in this analogy? The barrier in this macroscopic quantum tunneling is space-time itself. And what this means is the zero-point energy is space-time. The zero-point energy is space-time. It's the physical manifestation of space-time. What is inertia? How come I can't accelerate to the speed of light? Because the zero-point energy is slowing me down. So if I remove the zero point energy now, nothing should slow me down. In fact, I should be able to accelerate infinitely. This is how the physics works. This is why the physics works. What is the barrier? Zero point energy. So when we squeeze the vacuum, we create a bubble. We displace that region of zero point energy from the rest of the universe. And in this, now it has to go somewhere. How do you determine where it goes? How do you determine where it goes? Well, just like a magnet, positive and minus. Electrical engineering. Positive and minus will come together. They will attract. So if on one side we have three units of charge, three orbs spinning around our plane, three positive units of charge, it can be any number of units, then on the other side, we have an equivalent, three negative units. Now, the physical manifestation of this would be entanglement. We have either three orbs over here connected to three orbs over here, or three orbs over here connected to one orb over here, however it needs to be done. And then when the plane disappears, it's going to go to this, like as if it's an anchor. It's going to go to the anchor. There you go. Simple as that.